Hey, everybody. how you doing? Happy Friday. Happy hey, everybody Friday. out there. We have quite the webinar on our hands this morning. Uh, I am blessed to be joined today by Larry Wynn, the VP of Business Development here with Young Dental. And we are going to be chatting about the ultimate guide to same day digital dentures. I know that this has been something that everyone's wanted to do. I'm super pumped, super excited. Larry, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, it's going to be a good one. Yeah, I hope so. Thank you for having me. Um, so, Larry, who are you? Why don't you give us a little background of what who you are, what you do, and kind of your role in life? Sure. So, uh, my name is Larry, as you already introduced me. Um, we're, I'm here at Young's Dental, and Young's Dental is uh, started off as a service company, uh, fixing dental chairs and everything, and then we moved into supplies. And then we move into large equipment and digital equipment. And now we're fully a CAD CAM educators. Um, my role is to just make sure that I have a strong team to educate doctors. And we do a lot of education at wadedental.org. And we do a lot of in-office education just to train doctors how to use the equipment when they do purchase it. We feel our philosophy is when doctors make a huge purchase, Usually in the industry uh, is more of here's your product, we deliver it, good luck, shake hands, yeah. and you'll never see them again, right? <laughs> and uh, we don't believe in that because most of my team comes from the hospitality industry. So in coming into the dental industry, we realized that there was such a huge gap of you know doctors not getting the right support, right training, right education. So we invested millions of dollars into our facility to create a playground where doctors can always come in, uh, play with a product that they've purchased, and then get hands-on training uh, from one of our certified trainers so that they can go through the workflow and understand what it looks like in a day-to-day -day operations. So good thing about uh, our team is that we have a lot of clinical experience along with some lab experience. So that helps marry the two information together. And now we are able to come up with a solution. So our, my best part of the job is really solving problems. I mean, digital dentistry is growing so fast every day. And doctors will always ask because they, they look at it in a clinical aspect and say, Larry, how I do this in the analog world. How is this translated into digital? And I'll look at it and I figure it out. And once I come up with a solution, I share it right away. And I try to publishize it and I put it into my lectures. So uh, it's been extremely fun. And I think uh, there's so much more things happening in digital dentistry. I'm so excited. And the whole point of what we realize in digital dentistry is that it really helps a clinician uh, operate better and uh, have better workflow and less patient in the chair. So I think that's extremely huge of how digital dentistry has ca uh, cut down the processing time of uh, taking care of these patients. So. Yeah, for sure. And like, at Evident, we're, we feel the same, like support is massive. It's like, you know, we're, you know, it sounds like, you know, the both of us are kind of in that industry, we're doing what we can to ensure that like the journey is one that's filled with success, that there's like a workflow in place, that there's really good understanding and kind of everything else in between. So um, are you guys like nationally? Are you worldwide? Like what, who are you servicing? What, like what areas are you in? So right now we're servicing everyone in the United States. So, you know, I, me and my team, we fly all over across the country. Uh, we're based in Cerritos, California, but we, you know, serve doctors in New York, uh, Boston, Massachusetts, all East Coast. So there is no limitations of where we go in the United States. And yeah. Cool. And uh, why don't you give us just a little quick background about uh, how you got it into all of this and, and, you know, what's your experience in the industry? Oh, geez. Okay. So <laughs> I... Uh, <laughs> I got into the industry about five and a half years ago. Um, originally, before that, a funny story, uh, I came from Red Lobster. I was a general manager of Red Lobster, the seafood restaurant, right? And so uh, most of you guys would say, how the heck did you get into the industry, right? So I was there. I know. So I was there and um, I was a general manager for multiple years. I managed 2,000 employees and I developed a lot of people into next level management. Uh, but eventually, it took so much time from me and my family, right? I worked all weekends, all holidays. I missed out on all of my daughter's birthday, unfortunately, right? I hate to say that. Uh, but then I figured, you know what? I need to uh, find a position 
in which I can still be financially okay, at the same time, have my life back for my family. They deserve that, right? And so going, uh, just looking for a job, I was always interested in dentistry because in high school, I actually wanted to be a dentist, right? Until career day came, the dentist said, you know, we get paid a lot, but we hate our jobs. And I was like, what? Why would you say that? (laughs) So it kind of scared me off a little bit, but you know, I was always interested in dentistry. So I figured, let's see what I can do in the dental world because my younger brother work in the medical world. Now doing the same thing that I'm doing, but medical. And he wanted me to join that way. But then I said, you know what, let me try to look and see if I can do anything in dentistry. So luckily I stumbled across Young's Dental, they picked me up. And I knew that in order for me to be effective, I needed to study harder than I've ever studied in my life, which was like literally 24 seven, opening up Pross book, opening up Perio books, uh, and going through all of these studying and reading. And luckily for me, the Young's Dental already had amazing education background. And so we have a lot of strong KOLs all over the world. So it was very fun for me to sit there for free and listen to all the lectures and see what they're doing, ask them one-on-one questions, got to be in, involved in their offices, go through some surgeries together. So all of that was like amazing experience in the last four and a half years. And then now, as I continue to kind of master my craft, so to speak, in digital dentistry, then I do lectures myself. And I've been lecturing for the last two years in this topic. So uh, it's been quite fun. Uh, But, you know, it definitely took a lot of hard work. It's (laughs) four or five years of just constant studying, failing and and solving problems. Yeah, it's admirable that, you know, you kind of took it on to do some a bit of self-education and you were equipped with really good mentors and all that kind of stuff, because really, you know, Mm -hmm there's a lot of CE stuff out there, but honestly, like that, that connectivity with another person that can really kind of like, you can pick their brain and do all that kind of stuff and really yes. fine tune all of yes. those you know concerns and questions that you have is, is amazing. Yeah. So I guess part of what we're, what we're doing and what we're talking about is like, you know, there is definitely a need nowadays for patients wanting to get their stuff back a little bit quicker. They're right. more heavily involved in kind of like the whole digital uh, or sorry, dentistry process. So we yeah. end up in this very, very unique situation now where you know, we've kind of had to speed up some of the different things and really kind of start streamlining certain workflows and everything else in between, especially even more advanced since COVID, because, you know, there was so much that had happened in the industry and, you know, dentists were becoming a bit more equipped in their office in order to be able to meet demands and, and all of that stuff. So um, I think part of the stuff that we're going to be working through today is like, hey, this is something that has been such a need in the industry for so long. Digital dentures, it's, it's here. I think a part of the, the biggest thing is, is that there's still a few people out there that might think that there still needs a bit of work, especially with like cross arch scans and kind of integrating videos and all that stuff. So, mm-hmm. but what we're going to actually go through today is the fact that it's here, it's ready, it's good. And Larry is going to walk us through all of that stuff. So for that's context, good. like I'd mentioned, that's what we're going to be doing. Mm-hmm. and. Uh, that's, I th- I'd say let's kind of uh, start kind of getting into it. So we're going to go through copy dentures. We're going to go through uh, partially edentulous. We're going to go through edentulous. We're going to go through all of that stuff, materials, uh, processes uh, from printing and, and all of that stuff and, you know, recommended materials. And of course, we're going to be touching on uh, milling dentures as well. Right. So why don't we kind of, I don't know if you want to start with just like the slideshow and start walking through and we'll kind of like continue sure. through all of that and kind of go sure. from there. Oh, okay. actually. Step one, let's run the first poll. People out there joining us today, how many of you are already doing digital dentures? Let's see. Because then that kind of gives us an idea of of what we're we're looking at. So if you can all go ahead and put in your information, that'd be superb. And then let's see what we're pulling at. Uh, I'll try to vote, but it says close the panelists cannot vote. (laughs) Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, what's going on here? Uh, oh, okay. So wow. uh, currently, mm-hmm. I you can see the results as well. So I take impressions and send it to my lab, 57%. I scan and send it to my lab, 14%. I scan and 3D print in-house, zero. Larry, there's zero. Wow. And then I scan and mill in-house. So we do have some millers out there. So that's Very excellent. Cool. So yep. let's get at her. All right. Well, then I guess today's... Uh, Session is going to be perfect for those because they don't 3D print in house. Um, so 3D printing, uh, before we get started in the uh, slides, uh, 3D printing is an ongoing, growing uh, process. The technology is 
moving faster than the speed of light and new resins are coming out, getting FDA approved. The resins are getting stronger, more flexible, so on and so forth. So we're gonna go over uh, some of the materials a little bit later, uh, but I'm so excited because there's already doctors today that does a lot of 3D printing um, uh, dentures for the patient. Uh, most of them is going to be for uh, temporary use uh, as their actual ones getting relined or whatever like that. But at least now the patient has two uh, options, one for backup and one for final. So I think that's going to help a lot of our doctors today because when the patient has a broken denture, what are they going to do until they see you in your appointment? Have nothing, right? Most of the time. So having a backup is such a a life-saving situation for the patient and, and they're going to really appreciate. And the cost of 3D printing it is like so cheap that everyone's going to win in this. So that's why I wanted to expose this a little bit more. So let's go ahead and show my screen and then I'm going to go over the slide. So yeah. And, you, and you're right. Like that, that ability to kind of like reprint if something's gone wrong, it's, it's so valuable because you can actually, they can call ahead and say, Hey, this has happened, blah, blah, blah. And then even before they walk in, generally speaking, you know, as long as, you know, records and everything were okay initially, you can have that already delivered to them so that they've got that meantime solution until you kind of do anything else from there, right? So. Mm -hmm. And for some of you that have a medit also, uh, I'm going to, if we have a little bit of time, I'm going to try to um, save some time. I'm going to show you some ways where you can use the medit fullest power to capture the palette and the video and opposing draw and everything. So I'm going to show that after this presentation, if we have time. Uh, so that we can add more values to some of our Medit users also, okay? If not, we'll do a part two, Larry. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Give me more content, I guess. Yeah. Um, so let's go over digital denture workflow, okay? And I'm so happy, once again, this is Young's Dental and Evident coming together to really help uh, the world uh, do digital dentistry. All right, so let's, let's begin. Uh, the first, you know, workflow is going to be for people that wants to replicate the denture, right? The patient comes in, you have wobbly denture, doctor's gonna reline it, right? They reline the denture, and then you're going to scan the denture with the medit and taglio and everything like that. And once you have the information, then you'll be able to 3D print. That's as basic as it gets, uh, as simple as it gets. And then now, once you 3D print that uh, denture, then you'll get that denture, and then you'll stain and glaze it with a light curable stain. Um, you can use all sorts of different material. GC has great material. Uh, Taub has great material uh, where you can just paint the gums and then use a glaze, glaze it up and light cure it, harden it, and you'll have amazing result like the one you see there on the right, right? And that's a 3D printed product. Uh, 3D printing something like this uh, with the right material will cost you maybe $10 right? And you can multi print multiple of these things if you can, but for $10 and, and kind of painting it yourself, a couple of things happen. One, you add your personal touch to it. You mm -hmm. basically stamp your signature as the patient caring doctor for your patient to make sure the patient get exactly what you want them to have, right? And so you paint the gums, you characterize the teeth, you add a little bit of translucency, you uh, then glaze the whole thing, and it's just gonna look really realistic. And for, in some cases, doctors have such great result in comparison to the current lab that it kind of separates them because sometimes doctors have the same labs around the general area, right? So there's like one lab serving 20 uh, doctors and they always, they always get the same denture product. And so everyone kind of walks out with the same looking ventures. Well, at this time, by sending a design to Evident and Evident designing it, sending it back to you and you 3D print it, now you control it. You can control the shading of it, making sure the gingiva uh, color matches the patient, et cetera. So that kind of just separates uh, one from the herd, okay? So you stain and glaze it, you use multiple material, and then you deliver. This one is going to be a specific workflow that I can definitely uh, show when we have time. Uh, once again, this is creating a new denture from existing denture, right? And so a lot of us, when we are relining it, sometimes the patient might say, you know what? I, I had this denture for 15 years, 20 years. Um, I just, I want a better fit, but I also kind of want to see if you can change up the teeth a little bit, right? So in this workflow, you reline it like you usually do. You 
give it back to the patient, get the new intaglio, a palate, and then you scan the denture fully, right? You scan the intaglio, the teeth shape, you scan the lower arch if they have teeth already, you scan the opposing jaw, and then you scan the bite. Once you capture that, then the beautiful thing about the meta uh, design software is that we can now crop off all of the teeth. We're gonna crop off all of the teeth and then now you, it leaves you with just the palette, okay? And then in the meta uh, design, there's one click of a button where it turns that palette, the intaglio into a palette. It basically inverts the data. This is what your designer would really need, right? So once we capture the palette, uh, the intaglio, we crop off the teeth, we invert it, what do we just do? We kept the upper jaw and the lower jaw locked in position. Uh, and capture the VDO as well. So this, what, what does that do? It, it skips out on you needing to take a, get a bite rim. It skips out on uh, trying to identify where the midline or the occlusal plane is because you have the previous scan as your pre-op scan, right? So the previous teeth scan, all of that, you're gonna save it, send it to evident as a pre-op scan. And then now you're gonna send a palette uh, that you inverted into a palette. And then now you're gonna send them that fixed video, that's a home run, right? For any designer, when they take that um, bite scan from the previous denture, they're gonna just use that as a bite rim in the design software. And then from there, they're going to uh, make the teeth and obviously uh, make it in a different way that the patient might want. And then send back to the, the office to show the patient the new teeth. And if the patient accepts, then the file gets sent, the doctor captures the STL file, 3D prints it, and then it, it would take us into this next slide, right? So you send those scans to Evident, and then Evident sends you the STL, you take it, you print it out, okay? And then once again, you stain and glaze it, right? So as, as you can see, some of these are starting to make sense as we're going through it. Uh, digital denter, uh, dentures has multiple uh, issues. It's not one way fits all because sometimes a patient comes in with no teeth at all, indential, fully indentulous. Sometimes they have a couple of teeth, right? So all of those instances has a role. So for example, if a patient comes in with one or two teeth left, don't extract it yet. We're going to use those teeth. We're going to scan the upper or lower as a pre-op scan, capture the palate, and then capture that as the bite rim, right? And then use that as your occlusal plane at the very minimum. With the occlusal plane, then when the designer makes the teeth, they'll line up the midline and everything like that, and then you're all set to go, okay? So that's going to be using existing dentures and then trying to create a new smile for the patient uh, with a new uh, reline. Next is going to be doing it from scratch. Now, in this part of the topic, it could be a little bit controversial where some people will say, well, Larry, you know, I try scanning inside the mouth, fully indentulous, it's very hard, it's sometimes getting accurate, and this is all true, right? So sometimes you can get a good result and sometimes you won't get a good result. Uh, so that part is a little bit of a uh, technique sensitive, but the basic workflow is you scan the indentulous patient, you send it to the design, to evident, and they design the, uh, the denture and then you 3D print. So that's kind of like the most basic way of seeing it. Or if I was to uh, recommend in a case like this where patient comes in fully indentulous for whatever reason and don't, ha don't have any dentures, no references, they're just fully indentulous. Uh, then I would recommend taking the impression. Take the impression, why? Because when you're trying to scan intraorally and you're moving the lip around, the frenum and the mucosa changes a lot. And with the change, then the designer is not gonna give you a good border uh, that you would really want, okay? So taking an impression, either pouring out the stone or scanning it with your medit, the impression itself, uh, then it's gonna capture everything in the stationary uh, position so that when the designer designs the, dent uh, the gingiva base, it adapts right into the, uh, the, the base of their mouth there. And so, so that's my recommendation. Then obviously some of us will say, well, Larry, how do you capture the bite? Then you're gonna need some sort of bite jig and then capture it in the mouth so that you can scan a little bit of the uh, upper jaw, a little bit of the lower jaw so that the medit can put those two lock into position so that you can capture the video that, that you want, okay? So that's kind of the basic workflow there and you 3D print, once again, staining glaze and deliver.
Okay. Here, um, doctor is going to have to understand that there's multiple ways of having digitized dentures. Uh, one is going to be a monolithic, meaning you have the teeth and model, uh, the teeth and the gingiva combined together, right? And there's somewhat of a debate online and, and some colleagues that I, or some of the doctors I talk to do have this debate whether they like monolithic or they like the non-monolithic, okay? So the monolithic approach is you print the whole thing in the uh, crown material of your choice. If the patient want Hollywood bleach shade or A1, A2, whatever, you're gonna 3D print that. And, all, and the beautiful thing is that there's a lot of resins. We're gonna go over some resin material in a bit, uh, but there's a lot of resins out there that you can choose from that are FDA approved, that are fairly strong. And once again, in the future, there's more resin material coming out that are even stronger. And, uh, and there's going to be some like Lucitone type resin that's coming out that I'm super excited about. Uh, but you're going to print out in that shade. And then obviously the monolithic will come in one color. And then you just paint the gums the color of your choice and add some viscosity, uh, veins, blood, whatever you want to do to make it look realistic to you. Then you have the non-monolithic, right? The non-monolithic is you'll have two separate data. One is going to be the teeth, uh, uh, the whole teeth bridge, and the one's going to be the base. And what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to bond those together, right? You're going to take those two items and you bond them together. And then usually you mill out the base in pink, right? So they do have a milling product that is pink. And I'll show you in my next slide uh, what the milling process looks like. But you'll mill out the, the gingiva in pink, and then you'll mill out the teeth in PMMA uh, material, right? And the PMMA has all sorts of colors, multi-layer, et cetera. So that's a whole different world, uh, but you can definitely do that for some of our viewers here already know about milling dentures. Uh, that's what you'll be doing is to uh, mill out uh, teeth and denture base. But if you have your denture that is below 30 millimeters, you can actually mill in monolithic as well meaning that you mill the whole thing and you still paint the gums, like how you 3D printed. But it's very important that not a lot of, I think 95% of milling machine out there, uh, you they only accept a 30 millimeter uh, uh, height, right? And sometimes some of these dentures are beyond 30 millimeters. And sometimes you have to angle it in a certain way in your cam software to make sure it fits right and reduces undercut, et cetera. Uh, it might not fit. So 3D printing has an advantage where it doesn't matter how tall it is, it will still print, right? But with milling, you know, beyond 30 millimeters, you're going to have problems. You would have to mill it, uh, individual teeth separately and the base separately. So I want everyone to understand when they think about mill dentures versus 3D printing dentures, those are the uh, parameters in the uh, milling world. Um, okay. Just a quick, quick question, because uh, we've got a, a few things coming up up here. Um, so, but in the world of three D printing, you can also still print separate base, separate teeth, correct? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yep. Uh, and then uh, one of the questions that's come through is that if you are doing it, if you are printing the monolithic denture, is it with a crown resin or like what would be your recommendation? So, if you uh, print a monolithic, I will print it in a crown resin, and mm -hmm. uh, I'll show you in some of the other slides. There's a resin that is a nano ceramic infused resin. Oh yeah, yeah. right. So yeah, it has, it's yeah, it's like it has ceramic fuse in it. So one is aesthetically beautiful, and then second, it has a strength as well. And a lot of our doctors are using this specific resin for a hybrid prosthesis for all in four, all in six. Yeah, so yeah. if they're using it for something like that, definitely dentures is in the same line and same uh, category there. So good question. Well, any other question there? Uh, yeah, just uh, whether or not, and I'm not sure if you're just going to be touching base on this, but could you explain the difference between 3D printed dentures and milled dentures in terms of quality? Quality, yes. Okay, so it really depends on the milling machine. 3D printers nowadays, most 3D printers print really great quality, 50 microns, 100 microns, 150 microns, right? And the details of it is almost perfect in, in 3D printing. Now in mill, is can be just as good. However, is very specific to what kind of milling machine, 
right? So if you have a milling machine that has a five axis capability, then you can get darn good results, right? Uh, but if you have like a four axis or even a three axis, well, for a three axis, you might not be able to even do it. Uh, but four axis, you can, but the quality might not be where you want to be. So it has everything to do with your milling machine and the manufacturer and also the burr size. So the milling machine, what I recommend when you're in the market for milling machine, definitely ask the rep or the manufacturer, what's the thinnest PMMA burr that you have? And if it's 0.6, then great, you're gonna get some great details. But if it's one millimeter and above, then you might not get the details that you would want. Um, for example, for some of our uh, CEREC users that use CEREC, the anatomy of the molar is never going to have beautiful anatomy like the one from a five axis milling machine. Okay, so if you were to compare it side by side, let's, I'm just going to throw brand out there. So you have the CEREC milling a, a posterior crown and you compare that posterior molar to a Doff Craft five axis milling machine, for example. There is no comparison because the Craft 5X uses a 0.6 millimeter burr so that it can get that pit and, detail. and details so beautifully. And, and that's another lecture that we, we can get into in terms of difference of, of uh, milling machines and the quality of the product from five axis, four axis, three axis, and also burr size. So mm -hmm. in milling machine, a little bit more technical. In 3D printing, not so technical. You just literally nest it, put the right material and print, and you're gonna get the quality that you need. It, it's depending on what um, what level of micron accuracy you want, right? So you want 50 micron accuracy, which is majority of 3D printers now today. Uh, you print that and it's gonna look smooth. It looks good once you stain and glaze it, it's going to look like, you know, the product that you get from a lab or sometimes even better. Okay. Yeah, and as a design center, one of the only things really that we kind of really appreciate is to know what kind of printer you have and what your resin you're, you're using. Yeah. Um, and then the same thing for a milling machine, just so that we know that as we're setting up the product in, in the design itself, that mm -hmm. we're, you know, within the parameters and we're considering what you're like, you know, for milling, like you've mentioned, like burr size and that, because it, it does kind of have like a fundamental base in the physical design as well. So, yes. um, you know, that's just, you know, something on the design side that can be really, really helpful is just knowing what you're using, what your resin, what your block is, all that kind of. 100%. 100%. Yep, so that you're, you, the evident will definitely, you know, uh, gear into the exact equipment that you have. Because not all equipment are made the same. Really? Right? Yeah, so so a lot of people think, oh, I'm just going to get STL anywhere and I'm going to print in my uh, 3D printer that I got from Amazon for 400 bucks and it's going to be great, right? It's not necessarily the case sometimes. Um, so, you know, speaking of 3D printer and the lines of it, the ones that we've tested that has been validated, has worked, and we have uh, had doctors delivering, as you know, you have the Accuretta product. Accuretta is very good quality, good product, not too expensive to enter into the 3D printing market. And yeah. they created, uh, uh, and their focus is dental resins and dental related resins and making it validated, okay? Uh, the next printer that we've tested a lot is Sprint Ray. I know Sprint Ray, everyone knows about Sprint Ray. Sprint Ray is a large company. We've tested that as well. And their new uh, Pro 95S is outstanding. And the resins that they're having too, like the Onyx, Onyx Tough, they also have an Onyx Nano Ceramic also. Um, wonderful stuff. So now all of these printers are getting to this ceiling where they all produce great stuff, right? And now it's just about doctors really uh, getting into it at this point mm -hmm. because we have enough time and to do a research and development. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, move on forward because I know time is of the essence. Yeah. Uh, let's go over resin material. So the one that we've tested a lot, we've tested uh, hundreds and hundreds of different resin manufacturers. And what I'm presenting to you, they're, they're, I just put it up there. I'm not favoritizing any whatever. Like I, some of these resins, I don't even carry myself. So I just want to let everyone know that this is just an unbiased uh, topic. And uh, like Denka, for example, is a great product. We don't carry Denka. So we can't sell Denka, but they have great uh, denture base, denture teeth. Now the Pac Den uh, recently hit the market in a storm, right? They have their uh, rotten uh, sculptures. They have all this uh, material. And Pac Den has been around in dentistry for many years. They got into dental resin. 
And their sculpture is their nano ceramic resin, which is so amazing. I, I was so surprised. We printed it. We took all of our guys to step on it, tried to break the all in four, all in six uh, prosthesis. And that thing was very strong, right? Um, so very good product there. Uh, the, the beautiful thing about the Rodin is that it's open source resin, meaning you know you can use it with your Acuretta or you can use it with other 3D printer that's open source. Um, so that's kind of where is that you have to know what printer you have and whether or not it's open source or closed source. If it's mm -hmm. closed source, that means that that manufacturer only uses the printer that they validated and they've created, right? Uh, and they might have their great product as well. So definitely understand what uh, resin you need and what printer it works for. So Pacdent, you know, I rant and rave about that a lot because in the industry, when we look at cases with all in four and all in six, it held up really well. It looks very good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, I went too far. Let me go back one. Um, obviously, another material is Keystone, right? Everyone heard about Keystone. So we carry Keystone. We're a huge fan of Keystone product for many reasons. One, it prints beautifully. Like the material prints out very good. It doesn't have odor. Um, the uh, Keystone Splint Soft is a very popular, you hear that every, everywhere now. People rant and rave about the Keystone Splint Soft Night Guard material. Yeah. But Key, Keystone is one of those companies that created a lot of resins uh, that really work well with a majority of the printers in the market. And they're, they're super uh, nimble at working with other 3D printers. So if you look at a 3D printer that's within the dental field, most likely they validated a Keystone resin, right? That's how popular Keystone is. And another one from Switzerland, we have Ceremco. So Ceremco, they, right now they only have crown and bridge material. Right, so called the Crown Tech. They also are working on getting an FDA approved uh, denture base coming soon. So I'm excited to try that when it comes in and test it for you guys. Uh, but we've tested the Crown Tech, great uh, material for crown, uh, uh, crown inlays and onlays. Now here's the disclosure though, because 3D printing product uh, for final restorated teeth hasn't been studied long enough. I'm not gonna ever sit here and say, guys, this is a permanent crown material, right? Instead, I'm gonna say this is a good temporary material, but for sure, inlays and onlays is what this, these type of materials that they call permanent crown is really, really good for, right? So for some of the doctors that really like to do conservative dentistry, but their lab doesn't give them a good inlays and onlays. That's why they prep the heck out of it, right? Yeah. Now they can go back to doing inlays and onlays and the results are amazing. And guess what? Printing an inlay, I would print three or four of those chair side in case one doesn't fit, you always have the other. And the cost to the clinician is literally three to four dollars, right? Mm -hmm. And having it and serving it to the patient. Okay. So great product. And those are kind of the res material. Now let's go into and just, just yeah. quickly. I had a question. Uh, someone out here is asking whether or not we sell ceramic quite evident. We do. So oh, if you guys are interested in getting co, hit us up. <laughs> Because we got it. It's also it should be also on our website uh, at uh, shop.evidentdigital.com. So very good, good job, guys. Um, so now we're going to talk about milling dentures. Um, milling dentures, as you we already knew about the acquisition piece, right? So we acquire all the information and then we send it to Evident. Evident designs the beautiful denture, either monolithically or non-monolithically, and then you take it and you mill it, right? And I highly recommend when you mill, make sure if you want the greatest quality uh, product, get a five axis milling machine and make sure that your five axis milling machine has this thing called a C clamp. The C clamp allows the milling machine to go fully 90 degrees and mill from the top uh, of the facial of the bridge, giving you more aesthetic, okay? So those are the two things you look for, five axis milling machine and a C clamp capability. Okay, so that when you pull it all the way towards the edge of the puck, it mills out the facial beautifully so that there's no undercuts and it gives you the smooth finish that you want. Okay, so we studied this. This is why I'm sharing this with everybody, because we want you to know uh, not all milling machine is made the same. And that's why we're here as a resource. Okay, so that's the milling world. Next is uh, same exact thing that we talked about. What does the puck look like, right? So you have your pink puck. You have your uh, PMMA puck in all shades, all, uh, all multi-layer, whatever you need. 
they have all of that. That's the beautiful part. They even have a PMMA that is half teeth color and half pink, right? So you, you move in the CAM software specifically where the gingiva starts and then you mill it out and you characterize it for the rest of the way. Uh, so uh, the milling world has been around forever and has already been proven. So there's no point for me to try to convince anyone that mill dentures work because they do. It's been around for a long time and, and that's going to be the world there. Uh, but now we're today we're talking about um, using 3D printed dentures. Okay. So um, that's, Larry, just, yeah. just quickly, because um, I, I know that for those that are not super familiar with the processes themselves. So in 3D printing, there's a bit of a process once you've printed to kind of like wash, cure, do all that kind of stuff right. and so on and so forth. With milling, what is that process just so that people have some bit of clarity? Yeah. So the process is you put your puck material, you, let, you put the STL, it mills a lot out, and then you remove it off the sprue. And then once you remove the sprue, then you just uh, clean it up. If you have to, depending on your PMMA, of course, you sandblast it, you stain and glaze it. Uh, so there is no post-processing like how you would with 3D printing, which is you print, and then you put in a wash bath or a wash centrifuge, whatever you want to call it or whichever you have. And then you have to put in a curing box to harden the material uh, throughout the whole way. Okay, so that's the process for 3D printing. For milling, there's not much of a post-process besides the staining glazing part and making sure that the surface is rough enough to get uh, to uh, get the staining glaze to adhere better, okay. right? So, so that's kind of the process. Right. Well, well I guess we're at the end of the thing. So yeah. we're having a bundle and a part of, you know, us being good collaborators with Evident now, uh, we want to basically join forces with Evident to really give the doctors the best possible education, the best products and sort uh, resources to the right people to help you on this road. Because as of today, me and my team are busy every day because we're literally turning offices into full digital dentistry office. And it's been so much fun and we're willing to continue to do it for as long as I live. Because I think once everybody is uh, digitized, is, they're going to be much, much happier and the patient will be much happier as well. Um, but in this bundle is a complete, uh, so, so this is a simple bundle, bundle without the milling machine, is a complete in-office 3D printing bundle uh, in having a CBCT conjunction with a Medit and a 3D printer. You can send out your uh, acquisition to Evident and they can either make your restoration or even your surgical guides especially with a CBCT. So for some of us out there that are doing all in four and all in sixes, this might be a really good combo for you because then you can have a good surgical guide printed in office and uh, used in office with the design from Evident, right? So you'll get a ray scan CBCT, a meta intraoral scanner, a Accurata 3D printer in this bundle and $2,000 of evidence design credit. I mean, $2,000 is a good day. I think, uh, you know, using that $2,000 for some of the things you'll be doing, the ROI is going to be very evident. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a good one, Larry. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so, so that's our bundle. And I want to thank you guys for your time. I know we went through it very fast and we do have in-office course in Cerritos and we are going to work with Evident to launching that in 2023. So we can have hands-on eight hour lecture, step-by-step -step process and using our assimilation lab to really understand how to use this product, okay? Uh, so I think that's um, what we're looking for in the future. I'm super excited about it. Excellent, yeah, Nalari, I appreciate you taking the time with us today. And like you said, it did go by a little bit quick. And uh, so if, if any of you guys have any questions out there, feel free to, you know, you can reach out to me. I can connect you with Larry. Um, Larry, are you on Instagram? I am on Instagram. Yes. So you can find us at Young's underscore dental uh, on Instagram or on Facebook. You can find us at Young's Dental. Just type in Young's Dental and we have our Facebook page. If you want to go to our website is www.youngsdental.com. If you want to go to our education side of the business, it is wadedental.org.org. And you can see all of our course. You can see uh, me and uh, some of our KOLs in there, doctors that are lecturing throughout the whole year. We have different topics. So you can always sign up. And once again, we're, next year on 2023, we're going to work in conjunction with Evident to really get more fun. courses in there. And we're, it's going to be so much fun.
So excellent. And then, yeah, if you guys want to get a hold of me, I see uh, I've got a few of my guys on here currently. Uh, so hello, everybody. Uh, but yeah, you can call me 604 259 6043. Find me on Instagram, the underscore dental door. We're always here to help. Uh, and uh, we're excited for this digital journey. And we appreciate you taking the time to share your time with us and, and get some information from Larry and all of that stuff. So have a great weekend and we look forward to maybe possibly a part two so that we can work through the medit scans and all that jazz. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, and for those Americans out there next weekend, have a great Thanksgiving and uh, good luck on your black Friday sales. <laughs> all right, guys. Have a Take good care, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.